okay? So he's said these things will happen, but the seven years of tribulation are not going to happen until these two events happen, the falling away and the man of sin being revealed. Now that's got to be further explained before we get there. We're not there yet. Okay, so don't get confused in your thoughts. And what I probably should do is just read everything together uh, one of these days as a, um, uh, you know, with the, why am I talking about the prophecy update? I do, like I say, I read the same thing every couple of years just so people get the timing right. But anyway, um, here Paul speaks of the man of sin. It is a term unique in the New Testament. It is applied to a specific person who will be a man of lawlessness, as the word anomia implies. A, negative, nomia, law. Okay, nomos. The word signifies the utter disregard for God's law, his written and living word. That's helps word studies definition. To further describe him, Paul calls him the son of perdition. This is a term used only one other time in the Bible. Anybody know who that is? Son of perdition. There's two times it's used. Judas. Judas. Very good. Two points for you today. In John 17, 12, we're speaking of Judas who betrayed Jesus. So you got two sons of perdition. All right. One of them is Judas. The second is the Antichrist, the coming Antichrist. Judas, in essence, fell away from the truth of the apostolic office, which otherwise could have been his, okay, along with the other apostles. He chose the evil path, and he was essentially born to be destroyed, as is implied in the words of Matthew 26, 24. That doesn't mean that God created him to be destroyed. It means that God knew that he would do what he did. He would not turn back to the Lord. He would hang himself instead of doing that, and he cut himself off from any hope of restoration. P what, what Peter did was no less than what Judas did. He betrayed the Lord too. He denied him, but he was restored, wasn't he? He went on to be an apostle of the Lord. So, I mean, you know, we can say, well, Judas was so bad that he did this. Well, you, know, you look at what Peter did, and it was no better. He stood right there on the, the night of uh, Christ's crucifixion, and he says, I will never deny you. And then he did it three times. That's right, so whatever. Um, uh, but G Judas, the reason why Judas is going to be destroyed is because he did not turn back to the Lord, because the grace and the mercy of the Lord is infinite. He would have even taken Judas back, but God knew he wouldn't, so he's the son of perdition. Anyway, like Judas, this person will be set on a course which can only lead to ruin. We got four minutes, so we gotta go quick. The word Paul uses is translated as revealed as apocalypto. It will be as if a covering is pulled away and this person, bent on disregarding God's law, will be unveiled. He is then a counterfeit to Christ, and thus he is known as the Antichrist. Thank you. Point for you. What we have so far is the understanding that the day of Christ, meaning the day of the Lord, because Christ is the Lord, will not actually commence until the Antichrist is revealed. Now that's important because we're going to see pretty soon that we're not going to know who the Antichrist is. Everybody got that? If we don't know who the Antichrist is, then why would we bother trying to figure out who the Antichrist is? My focus is Jesus, not that guy. Secondly, if we are not going to know who the Antichrist is, and he's not going to be revealed until after we're gone and before the seven years of tribulation, then that means that we are not going through one day of the tribulation. You see the sequence? Paul's got it written out, and we just have to follow what he's saying. Okay, and so thus far we see this sequence of events. One, rapture of the church. Two, the falling away and the revealing of the Antichrist. Three, the day of Christ, meaning the day of the Lord. How do we know that the Antichrist is going to be revealed first? Because he's the one that has the treaty signed with Israel. You can't sign a treaty if you aren't revealed as the person who's going to sign the treaty. Everybody see the logic? It's so simple if you take what Paul is saying and put it in proper order. This is syllogistic thinking, by the way. Um, life application.